What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the channel with me, Mrs. Z1. Today, we are taking a look at Dream Engine's Nomad Cities. And once again, if you guys are interested in this game, I will have a link down below. Now, please keep in mind, this game is in early access. So we're going to go ahead and start a new game. I haven't ever played this before. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so it says select your tribe. It looks like the only ones we are able to select right now are the Junk Lords. Yeah, I think we can only do the Junk Lords. So we're going to go ahead and start with that. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and just save how things are set up. Let's go ahead and start. And Cucumber Land? <laughs> Okay, I think we're gonna we're gonna stay with Cucumber Land because I think it's hilarious. Let's go ahead and start it up. Welcome to Dream Engines. This tutorial will guide you through the basic controls of the game. This is only a guide and does not affect the game, so you can still lose if your city gets destroyed during the tutorial. Your current objectives will appear on the top right corner of the screen. Press F1 to show the tutorial for the current object objective once again. Um, as Overseer, you control Tiny, an ancient armored exploration unit. Use WASD keys to move around. Tiny will always face towards the mouse pointer. Okay. Use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Got that. Hold the middle mouse button and move the mouse to rotate your camera. You can press N to return it to the default view. Use the left mouse button to use Tiny's melee attack. Press and hold to attack continuously. Look at that. Use the right mouse button to shoot Tiny's crossbow. Press and hold to attack continuously as well. Oh, that is so cool. Well done, you received the following reward. What is that? Flux. The basis of all dream tech, this substance is extracted from the dream realm and can warp reality to make unphysical things happen. This is a global resource and, and does not require transportation. Okay. If you forget something, you can review previous tutorials in the journal window with J. Now let's build some houses for your workers. Management mode is used for building and managing your city. Combat mode is used when exploring the map and for fighting enemies. Press spacebar to switch between modes and open the management mod mode. This is the management mode used to build, move, and interact with buildings. In management mode, the main toolbar appears at the bottom and the build menu at the top at the bottom left of the screen. Mouse clicks won't trigger attacks in this mode. You will instead open building interface windows. By default, switching to management mode also switches the camera view to top down. You can change this default behavior in the settings window uh, by pressing Z. Okay. Select the house button and then click on the map to place two of the buildings. Okay. Perfect. Now you need to set up transportation to deliver food to the houses. Select the infrastructure category in the build menu and select rails, or you can use the keyboard shortcut to build rails with Y. Then click and drag to build rails from an empty tile next to the city core to an empty tile next to the houses. Note, rail carts can only travel in one direction. Make sure you drag and build the rails from the core to the houses and not the other way around. Okay. Now create an exit that will output food to the rail system. Click and drag as if placing rails from inside the building to the adjacent rail tiles. Select the food item to send out. Food. Yes, please send food. Next, create an entrance to deliver the food from the rail system into the houses. Click and drag as if placing rails into the house itself. Okay. We want food right there. Great. Now repeat this. So the food is delivered to both houses and wait for the food to arrive. There we go. Look at that. We are getting food to our houses. We did it. Well done. You received the following reward. 20 bloodwood planks, strong yet lightweight wood used in many construction and crafting recipes in the nomad cities produced at the wood warper from bloodwood logs. 
Next, prepare to explore the city's surroundings. Equip some repair kits in case Tiny takes damage. The repair kits are in the city's core. To open the building menu, left click on it while on management mode. This is the building win window. You can use Tiny's inventory on the left in the building storage and other info on the right. Hold shift and click on the repair kits icon to grab the entire stack. Repair kits. There we go. Now assign the repair kit to a quick slot. Press I to open the character window. Click on one of the empty quick bar slots in the character area and then choose the item you wish to assign to that slot. Once assigned, you can press the corresponding keyboard shortcut while in combat mode to use that item. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go with number one. Because, you know, basic. Uh, okay, that looks good. Well done. You received the following reward. We got four more repair kits. Sweet. Perfect. Let's get some raw materials so you can construct more buildings. Explore the areas around the city and search for the Bloodwood node. Remember to switch to combat mode before leaving the city. Okay, switching to combat mode. Let's see. Oh, we got some bad things. Oh my gosh. Wait, what is that? Did they drop stuff? That's pretty cool. Uh, more bad things. More lots and lots of bad things. Wait, are we hitting stuff? No. But can we hit that? What is that doing? Oh, are we getting stuff from that? Oh, I think we are. Okay, so we're looking for something else, though. How far away is this going to be? Oh, lots and lots of baddies. There's that resource node. Uh, now build a harvester. Switch to the management mode, click on the resource and open the window and then click on the blood wood cutter button. Okay, we got to take out some of these things first. We got baddies coming in first. I want to make sure we are safe before we do this. Okay, we are in the building mode. Let's see. Well done. You received the following reward. We got 30 more flux. You're now collecting logs, but before you can use them, they need to be refined into planks and transferred to storage. Logs and most other raw materials cannot be taken with you when you fly away, while refined materials can. Planks are produced from logs at a wood warper. A wood warper needs to be within their, within your power area, so it's better to build near your city. Build some of these and place rails to send them logs from, send the logs from the harvester. Okay, this is right over here, so it's actually not very far from our base. So let's go ahead build three wood warpers no power access okay we've got three coming in right here and we're gonna need to get some wood to them so let's bring our rails from here. Look at that. We got wood coming to all three of our wood warpers. 
Perfect, you can later unlock resource drop-off buildings. Those will let you automate delivery of raw materials and you won't have to build so many rails. Now, build some rails to send planks from the warpers into your city's core for storage. Then wait for some planks to be produced. Okay. So we're going to need to get some more rails. I'm trying to get them to all come into one line. There we go. They should be going into the core now. Well done. You received the following reward. Uh, your wood production will keep you supplied with planks to support your construction efforts. As you explore, keep your eye out for additional resource nodes. Once a resource node is depleted, it will produce at half speed and you may want to connect more nodes. Okay, now increase your city's population level to unlock some more buildings. To increase your city level, you need to reach a population of 21. Your city core will produce new citizens workers as long as housing is available. Build more houses to increase your population capacity. Wait until you have a population of 21. Um, okay, so it looks like we have 20 population right now. Okay, let's build some more houses. Okay, now we got food going to the houses, so we should increase our population here pretty soon. When you unlock new options, you can see information about them in the Dream Archive. Press tab to open the archive. Wood walls, wood gate, power generator. Oh, look at all the stuff. This is cool. Well done, you received the following rewards. We got some more blood wood planks. In order to be more efficient in exploring, gathering, and defending your city, you will need better equipment. Before you can craft new weapons or armor, you'll have to perform some research. More on that later, but you can already craft some more repair kits. Press C to open the crafting window, then select the makeshift repair kit and click the craft button. You'll need to get some more planks first. Makeshift repair kit. It looks like we're all good to go. Let's go ahead and craft. Do we craft? Oh, we can craft 15. Oh, that's pretty cool. You should see to your food supplies next. They won't last forever. First step in food production is growing raw food. A few per potato farm should do the trick. You will find them in the gathering category. You can expand your power area by placing Tesla towers from the power category. Okay. Do we just unlock a wood turret? Is that what I just saw? Oh my goodness. Okay, let's get some perp potatoes in here. Oh, we need to get some more Tesla toy uh, coils. Tesla tower. I'm thinking it's gonna expand us out. No power access. Build Tesla towers to extend your range. Okay, what if I build it right there? Oh, we can! Look at that! We have more power! Okay, we need some perp potatoes in here. Set up a uh, perp potato meal production. Now build a food plant and set up rails to transport the perp potatoes from the farm, then send the produced food to the city core storage. Okay, so we need a food plant. As your population grows, you will need to produce more food and you can build more farms for the food, for the food plant to reach full efficiency. You can see input and output amounts per cycle in the production UI when interacting with the buildings. Okay, so we need to make a food plant. Okay, we're gonna bring our make our food plant right there and I'm going to get some rails in here. All the perp potatoes are going right there and then it's going to output right here and go in there. Look at that. Perp potatoes are going to go into the food plant and then the food plant's going to go into the core. Well done. You received the following reward. We got some more food. To keep the city running, you will need more than food and wood. You will also need to produce enough power and flux. Flux is used to operate most of your machines and is also used to build new buildings. Craft equipment and later perform research. You will need a lot of it. 
Houses produce some flux, but you'll need more than that. The flux vats can produce flux and don't require any food. Build some of these outside your city. Their, more, their most basic production recipe doesn't require any raw materials, so don't worry about it where you put them. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put another Tesla coil, coil right here so that expanded out this area. And then we're going to bring in some flux vats. Your population now allows you to build research labs. Use labs to research technologies and unlock new buildings, upgrades, and other bonuses. Okay, we need to build three of these guys. Power is not needed to build new buildings, but is essential to operate existing ones. Make sure your power production is always positive. You can produce power at the power generator. Like Flux, its most basic recipe does not require any raw materials, but these cannot be built too close to each other. Build some power generators in outside the city. Okay, so let's get our rails set up real fast. Are we supposed to be bringing the Flux in? Maybe we don't have to bring the Flux in. I mean, it looks like there's an output. Let's go ahead and set up some rails and see if anything comes out. Nope, I'm gonna say we can't. Uh, can we delete these? How do we delete stuff? How do we delete stuff? Um. Is there a delete button? Demolish, yes. Demolish, demolish. Good job, demolish. Build power generator times two. And I think it said we weren't supposed to make them close to each other, so let's not do that. Um, Power generator. We're gonna put one over here. And then let's put one right there. You're almost ready to start exploring on your own. Before that, you should understand the core concept of building inside or outside your city. Since your city can fly, there are advantages to building out inside it. You can take these buildings with you. Space and carry weight, however, are more limited, so you'll need to prioritize what you build in the city. Most of the basic buildings are cheap and take up a lot of space, which makes them better fit to be built outside and scrapped before you leave. In the long run, however, you will want to be able to take more and more of your industry with you when you fly away. So some more expensive buildings or upgraded versions of the basic ones should be built inside your city. Luckily, most of these buildings are built in a way that allows you to easily move them from place to place. Press M to in management mode and move any building. After moving a building, remember to once again set their entrances and exits for resource transportation. Okay, it wants us to move a building. Okay, good job. This is the end of the tutorial. There are just the very basic controls, but it's time for you to head out on your own. Your goal in this alpha is to find a way to establish a permanent settlement. Your first goal should be to grow your population to unlock the research lab. Additional features and mechanics such as research infrastructures, upgrades, and autom automated harvesters will be explained when you encounter them. The tutorial objectives at the top right will now be replaced with milestones. We recommend you mouse over these milestones to learn about some of the less obvious systems of the game. Completing these milestones will also award you with a small amount of old world scraps that you can use to activate ancient machinery. Remember, collect as many resources as you can, refine before the drep overwhelm you, and leave before that happens. Make sure to balance between long-term buildings that you take with you and cheap short-term buildings that you abandon when you leave. Mm, okay, so we need to fix... Let's move this back because I kind of liked it where it was. <laughs> and let's fix our input or output. All the city is landed, it will attract large groups of drep. 
that will attempt to destroy it. Drep raids are more dangerous than those wandering around, and they attack in multiple waves. You can track the raid in the minimap, and it is strongly advised to build some defenses and protect your buildings from the direction of the raid. Turrets provide extra firepower, but can't withstand too much damage, so be sure to put up some walls. Wooden turrets fire slowly, but they deal explosive damage. They are well suited against clumped, weaker enemies, but you may need to help them take out stronger ones. You can also move turrets around when reorganizing your city, but only as long as there's no active or approaching raid. Okay, got that, those perp potatoes coming out into the line again. New threat level one. Threat level increased. Okay, so it looks like there's a raid that's going to be coming from this way. Okay, can we build some turrets? Wooden turret. Oh, we can't because... Oh, we need to expand out our power. Get some more Tesla towers in here. Okay, we built a turret. Drop attack. They're coming. Prepare to defend your city. Oh, dang it. I forgot we were in the wrong mode. Oh, my building's under attack. I didn't realize they could destroy my building. I mean, I guess it's probably, like, obvious. Oh, darn. Okay, we're going to have to help this time for sure. Because they're going to take out our buildings if we don't. Have a working stone worker. Okay, how do we repair this? Let's see. How do you repair? Resource depleted. The resource in this deposit has been depleted and will now produce a half speed. Oh, that sucks. And the health bar is down. How do we heal? How do we repair? Fix repair. Ha ha ha, I figured it out. Okay. So we need to have a working stone worker. Do we need to find like a stone replacement thing? Like... We need to find like a stone resource thingy. What the heck is this over here? I mean, there's lots of bad guys, so there's probably something good over here, right? Oh, what the heck is that? Is this a stone thing? Let's see. Tech ruins. These ancient ruins have some machinery that is still partially functional. With the right materials, you may be able to produce something, but you can only activate it once or twice before it becomes unusable. Unusable. Alternatively, you could scrap the whole place for whatever resources you can find. Um, I guess let's scrap it. We got a whole bunch of stuff from it. Okay, it doesn't look like we can do anything else to it anymore. Oh, I keep on forgetting I'm not in the right mode. Let's repair just in case. Oh, what the heck is that? Is that the stone that we need? Featherstone node. Featherstone miner. Okay, I don't know what the heck that is. But we have it now. Oh, darn it. I'm in the wrong mode again. Your bullying is under attack. Oh my gosh. Is there a raid? Repair. Oh, dang it. Oh, this is getting bad. Tiny's health is running low. Health slowly regenerates in the city. And you can assign and use repairs throughout the quick bar. Uh, if you take too much damage as... It, as 
If you take too much damage, an emergency teleport will be activated, returning you to the city, and you will lose precious time and resources. Try to keep Tiny intact. Emergency teleport. Oh, no. Okay. Where are we getting attacked at? I don't see where we're getting attacked at. I do not see it at all. Let's see about building a stonework worker though. And then I guess we'll see what we need. Stone worker refines raw feather stone so you can use it in construction. That's what we needed. The feather stone. We found it. Okay, we're gonna have to go back. I mean, luckily now we can see it on the map. We just need to be super careful because there's lots and lots of baddies around here. Okay, here is the feather stone right here. We need to bring it in. So let's get some lines set up, some rails. Raid approaching. Okay, we'll make a stone worker thing in just a minute. Uh, where's the raid coming from? Up top. Okay, let's see if maybe we can make a turret up here. Build. Turret. Okay, it says the enemies are nearby. So we can no longer build. I got a turret right here and I got a turret right here set up. So we shall see. Drop attacking. They're coming. Prepare. Oh, is this some more feather stone? Oh, dang it. I didn't know there were some so close to our base. Okay, we'll have to set another one over there. Threat level increased. New threat level two. Oh, no, 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 no. I see them. Don't take out my stuff. Can I repair this? Repair. Infrastructure upgrade available. Wait, are we still? Oh, we st we're still under attack. I thought we were done. Oh no! They destroyed my thing! They destroy destroyed my turret. Okay, let's see. Let's repair that. Is the attack over with? Can I build one of these now? Okay, let's get this stone worker going. It looks like we have enough to make another stone worker thing over there. Let's make one of these guys. Okay, now we have stone coming in. Oh, this is exciting. Build a research lab. Let's go ahead and get some more stone in here. Let's build one of those. Can't build enemies nearby. What? I didn't realize there was enemies over here. You know what? Let's go ahead and... I was going to say build a turret, but we got to defend some more. Okay, there we go. We got this coming in. Let's build another stone cutter. You don't have enough workers for all your buildings. Oh, no. To increase your maximum population, build and upgrade houses and make sure they have constant supply of food. Houses without power or food will not provide any living space. Okay. Okay. It looks like they have plenty of food. Can we upgrade? Insufficient resources. When in management mode, you can activate the upgrade layer with the building with the button to the left of the minimap. When active, every building will show an icon that is that it's current level and a button to upgrade that building directly from the game view. This view is very useful for managing your economy and built in upgrading buildings. Okay, so it looks like we don't have enough of whatever the heck that blue stuff is. But we can go ahead and make some more houses. 
We'll make a house right there and a house right there. And it's going to be super easy because all we got to do is connect these rails to be going into those houses. Connect the rails to be going into those houses as well. Okay, let's get this stone set up. We need a rail. And we'll have it come in. There we go. We should be having some more stone coming in. Oh, wait. I didn't connect it from here. There we go. Stone should be making... We should be doing some stuff with the stone worker. Uh, we need to be building a research lab. You've just built your first research lab. Press R to open the research, the research screen and select which technologies to research. This screen allows you to plan and set your research. Each subject has a cost and knowledge points and elements that are unlocked by completing this research. Hover your mouse over and unlock to learn more about them. Um, click on any research subject to start a goal. If it has prerequisites, that have not been researched, those will be queued automatically. Shift click to add additional subjects to the end of your queue. Okay. Um, once a research goal is selected, labs will start producing knowledge. Knowledge points will be assigned to the first subject in the research queue until it's completed. Okay, I think we're gonna start with this star wood because we need that to upgrade our houses. For the labs to produce knowledge, make sure you regularly supply them with the required materials as shown in the production widget when interacting with the lab. Okay, what do we need? A workshop. Deep processing. F no, I want this one first. Okay, we need to give it the resources, I guess. What do we need? Flux and starstruck tar. Um... How do we make starstruck tar? Tar extractor. Extract starstruck tar from the soil under the city. Insufficient workers. <laughs> oh my gosh, we need more. We need more workers. Let's see, I might be able to get one more house right here. And we will have a rail coming off this way to go in there. Okay, can we get this, the tar extractor now? Tar extractor. Oh, we already had one. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, insufficient resources. You do not have enough resources to upkeep the building. It looks like we have a threat coming in. Oh, uh, we got a whole bunch of baddies right here. Drep attack. Uh, of course. Heal up. Okay, it looks like they're coming from this way. And I have no turrets over here. Of course. need to pay better attention to the raids. I don't think I have any more. Oh, I do have some more repair kits. Okay. I have to just wait for a little bit to use them again. Oh my gosh, this game is really fun. Okay, it looks like maybe we're done with that okay let's repair and come back over here into the city oh does, does it need to like be being transported in i'm guessing so okay let's go ahead and craft up some rails look at that we have some tar stuff coming in or whatever the heck it is okay so now we need this stuff. Oh no, I'm gonna have to move this. 
move the research lab to over here. People are dying. What? People are dying. Oh, we probably don't have enough food. Oh no. Insufficient workers. Okay, let's make some more. Let's make, let's make some more of these things. Okay. Let's see. I forgot about the food. I forgot about food. Okay, I just made another three herb potato farms. Oh, can we upgrade these? Okay, we we can upgrade them. When you feel they're getting too tough, you should f when you feel they're getting too tough, you should fly away and find a calmer place to land. Click the launch button in the HUD to initiate takeoff procedure. It takes some time while the engines are warming up, so don't wait too long or you'll become drep food. Remember only the buildings within the city will flash will fly with you. So consider scrapping the external ones to get some of the resources back or moving them into the city if you have free space and carry weight. Also, unrefined raw materials like logs are too heavy to carry, so they won't be, so they will be left behind. Refine as many as you can before leaving and make sure Tiny is in the build it's in the city when the timer runs out. I feel like oh, are we ready to take off? I guess we're going to take off. Oh my gosh, it's charging up. It looks like it's charging so fast. I don't think we're, we, I mean, I feel like we probably could do some more. What is this? Insufficient resources. You don't have enough. Okay, so let's get some stuff going to this research thing. Let's see. We need to build a rail system from here to here. And we wanted to be taking out the starstruck tar and what else flux we also need flux and this one is going to be taking out or is a flux okay maybe we don't need to use that maybe the flux is already there I mean, it looks like it's already there. Oh my gosh, we're taking off. It's done. That was so fast. We didn't do like any of this other stuff that I wanted to do. Do we go to like another place? Congratulations, your city is flying for the first time. In this screen, you can select where you want to land next. <gasps> Oh, that's so cool. Select your next landing spot carefully. Your choice will affect the strength of the enemies, which resources will be on the map, and how many. The options you are presented depend on the current global infestation levels shown at the top left of the screen. If you don't like any of these options, you can fly elsewhere. You can click the fly elsewhere button to refresh your choices at the expense of some fuel. Oh my gosh, look, this one has like everything. Resource rich, tech ruins, desert, chemical ruins. Oh my gosh. I think we're going to fly here. I mean, the enemies look a little bit worse, but you know, we're going to do it. You've chosen to land in a location of higher difficulty than the current global infestation level. This will immediately increase the infestation level. However, the global global infestation level indicator at the top of your destination selection window to learn more about this. Um You know what? We're going to we're going to stick with this. And look at that. Our city is here. We are back. This is so cool. But that's actually going to end it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for coming out and watching. Once again, if you guys are interested in purchasing this game for yourself, I will have a link down below. If you have any tips or tricks for me, leave them down below as well. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Bye.